Hello and welcome to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast, which features interviews and discussions on all issues relating to high quality in the early years and school age care sector. In our episodes, we have a range of speakers who are leaders in the areas that matter to Early Childhood Ireland members. This podcast series is proudly supported by Aricus Insurance, which offers a comprehensive range of cover at discounted premiums for both business and personal insurance products. So visit www.aricus.ie for more information. I'm Maura Corbett and I work with Early Childhood Ireland. Research is a key part of our work here at Early Childhood Ireland. It's one of the ways we fulfil our vision of early young child thriving and learning in quality early years and school age care in centre-based and child-minding settings. The European Early Childhood Education Research Association, more commonly known as ASERA, hold their conference annually in various locations in Europe, and it's the largest and most significant early years research conference in Europe. It regularly attracts more than 900 researcher delegates from all over the world. The ISERA conference is hosted in a different European city each year by a local university or early years network, and it aims to share current research and encourage networking and cross-national collaborations. And indeed, Early Childhood Ireland has hosted it in Dublin on two occasions, and we're delighted to participate every year, both by presenting research we've been involved with as an organisation and learning from and being inspired by research presented by other delegates. This year, my colleague Fiona Kelleher, Early Childhood Specialist, attended ASERA in Portugal, and I decided to invite her on the podcast today to tell us about the event. So Fiona, you're really welcome, and I'm looking forward to hearing both about the research that you presented on and to chat about some of the research you were interested in. So um, you're welcome. Thanks so much, Maura. I'm delighted to be here and have the opportunity to share my experience of ASERA, okay. um, which is a really positive one, I might add. Brilliant. So what remind me, Fiona, what was the theme of the conference this year? Yeah, so this was um, the 31st um, annual conference with ASERA. And the theme this year was looking at children's curiosity, agency and participation, um, challenges for professional action and development. And as you know, it was held in uh, Lisbon in Portugal and it was from the 30th of August to the 2nd of September. So it was three full days. You know, what do we as an organisation um, bring to it? What do we gain from participating in, in the conference, Fiona? Yeah, so I think you alluded to it in your introduction um, at talking about our vision. And I suppose one of the goals that come out um, are from our vision and our mission statement is that we thrive or endeavour to empower and facilitate our members to undertake some action research, but also to use research in practice and engage in reflective practice. Um, we also undertake and commission applied research to better understand, I suppose, the factors that influence structural and process quality um, in the early years, school age childcare and child minding services. So this is a great opportunity um, to actually bring this research to life and to, I suppose, have an opportunity to share um, the knowledge that we've learned through our research at this conference with our peers from all around Europe. You talked about um, in your introduction as well that there was, you know, it's 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 open to all of Europe, but also loads of people outside of Europe attend ASERA. And so we had colleagues from the US and New Zealand and other places. So it's just it's such a wonderful, I suppose, opportunity and really beneficial for educators, researchers and anyone interested in improving the field of early childhood education. Um, they, it provides really a platform, I suppose, for researchers like ourselves and our colleagues to present findings, share their knowledge um, with their wider audience. And this as well facilitates that whole dissemination of the latest research that's taken place, theories, the latest practices in the whole field of early education. And in turn then, so, you know, we, we bring our research to it. We hear what's happening, what's cutting edge, as they say. And yeah. then, you know, that obviously has impacts for our members in terms of sharing that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's if I suppose really it can it, it, it can have a huge influence on policy. So, con you know, conferences of this nature um, 
can attract policymakers and government representatives as well. And by attending these events, we can provide another, I suppose, platform for us to engage in those kind of decision making and advocating for evidence based research to influence policy, um, which in, in turn benefit young children, their families, the early years educators. Um, but also, I suppose there's also a networking side to the whole event which is really important because it kind of gives us an opportunity to come together with other experts and educators and even practitioners from various backgrounds and locations. Um, and this can really lead to valuable collaborations and research partnerships um, and, and maybe research projects and European projects. Um, and I know that I would have met a lot of people there that I was involved in European projects with down through the years. So it's great to reconnect with, um, with those uh, people and maybe even discuss what's going on for them in their, in their area and see if there's other opportunities to collaborate on other projects in the future so I mean it's it's all of this then will in turn impact on our members because it's giving us information it's giving us up-to-date research which we can then disseminate to our members and I think there was a large Irish delegation there this year so as well as the kind of transnational um, networking there was um, meeting there really with, was. with an Irish delegation as well yeah, there really was. And that is, again, another great opportunity to to uh, to meet up with with people that you might, you know, just might have the, have the opportunity to see. And um, so this I think this year they noted that it was the, Irish, the, the highest Irish delegation of any of the conferences, um, which is just, I suppose, indicative of the amount of research that's actually taking place in Ireland at the moment. And um and how we're we're seeing the value in sharing that research with our European and and other counterparts across um, across the globe um, who are represented at the conference. So it's great. We had lots. There was people there from the department, NCCA. There was people there from various universities, Maynooth, Trinity, um, Tusla was represented. Um, we had the National College of Ireland. There was, you know, a great delegation from Ireland. Um, and I suppose it's just brilliant to have the opportunity to engage in conversations with them in, in, in a conference setting. So um, we'll, and we'll talk a little bit now, I think, about, you know, the research that we that we shared as an organisation. There were um, on our, our delegation, I think there were three people made shared research. Is that is that right? Yeah, so that's, and that's Ethan, correct. Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. So um, our co my colleagues, Chloe Keegan and um, Aoife Horgan and um, Linda Kelly and myself all participated in the conference as presenters. Um, so Chloe actually was part of two presentations. So she was an eager beaver to share her, her um, knowledge and her, I suppose, her research, um, and which was really interesting. She shared um, a presentation around tools for tots an observational study exploring Irish children's use of real tools in the early years uh, sector. And um, I think it was received really well and there was a lot of interest in it. She also then co-presented with Aoife Horgan and they presented, um, and some of the listeners will know this, um, around a survey that was conducted with our members on outdoor play spaces in Irish early years uh, um, settings. And um, again, that was received really, really well. Um, and... Then Linda Kelly, another colleague of ours, she presented a poster presentation. So this is another side to a Sierra that it's not just all um, symposiums and keynote speeches. There's also an opportunity to present, a, 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 it's called a poster presentation, where you design and develop a poster. Um, and Linda took part in this, where she actually shared some of the findings from the research um, on the link program that she's involved with in Mary I. And she, this was on investigating children's perspective on inclusion using a participatory map mar, uh, making approach. And um, she she was there to answer questions as well, because during times like coffee times, coffee breaks and downtimes, the present, uh, the, the poster presentations are displayed 
um, in a communal area. So everyone is around, um, given the opportunity to, you know, go through them and ask questions and um, just see what's happening. And was, there was a great, a great number of poster presentations this year as well. I often think the poster presentations are harder to uh, to do in many ways than a, a PowerPoint. I know Absolutely. you don't have the nerves of standing up in front of a group <laughs> presenting, but trying to distill what you've done into photos and succinct text um, absolutely is right. so difficult, I think. Yeah, you're 100% right. And, and Linda did a, a super job because, I mean, I definitely would have found it very challenging what, you know, and, and to keep it interesting and not too much text. So she, she did a, a wonderful uh, poster presentation just showing the results and using graphics um, and still you know, managed to get it all in into one into one poster, which was great to show the story of the of the um, of the research and and what, what what's happening. So it was great. Uh, she did a great job. I don't know if I'd fancy it. I did my presentation just to um, share with you a little bit more because I probably know that the best. <laughs> Obviously, I was I was going yeah. to ask you that. I was saying you were after leaving yourself out there, so yeah. I wasn't going to let you away with that. Oh, <laughs> uh, listen, I tell you, it was um, you know, it, it is three full days and I was quite nervous and you're always nervous it wasn't my first time presenting at a, at a CIRA and um, but I think there's always an element of nerves when you're presenting anything in front of your peers and I was on the last day in the afternoon so I had the long the long haul the long wait while my colleagues were you know getting theirs over and being able to enjoy the rest of the conference and hear others. I was a little bit distracted, worried about mine. But anyway, I had mine and um, on the Friday afternoon and it went really well, thankfully. And my my research and my presentation is actually to do with um, phase one of the consultation with babies, toddlers and young children um, that I'm part of in the review of Ashter. So um, I'm part of a consortium representing Early Childhood Ireland, along with colleagues Liz Cairns and um, Carmel Ward. And we are working together with Maynooth University and Stranmillis College in Belfast. And we're working on the consultation of babies, toddlers and young children in the review and the update of ASHTER, um, the National Curriculum Framework. So my role at the, at the conference was to kind of share the methodology that we use for this consultation and um, I suppose it was it was a really fantastic opportunity not just to I suppose share which I think is quite innovative um, piece of research that we're conducting um, because we are focusing on babies and toddlers and young children so it's quite unique in its approach but also um, to get a little bit of feedback and to hear you know how the audience receives it and have, what their questions are and to bring that back to the consortium as we move into phase two of this particular project. So um, I was delighted with the response that we got um, I don't like there's an opportunity obviously to read the full report it's on the um, it's on the uh, NCCA website there for everybody to read. Uh, it's quite quite lengthy, as you can imagine, the report. But I mean, there's there's some really interesting nuggets in there. Um, so if anybody is interested, to please feel free to look it up after, after the podcast. But I suppose and we can put a link in the um in in the blurb so people will know where to where to find it. That would be super. Yeah, that'll make it much easier as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so um, I suppose really why this is such groundbreaking research, if I want to call it that. I don't know, maybe I'm a bit <laughs> biased, but um, I suppose it's it's the way that we're involving our co-researchers, which are the educators that are working with the babies, toddlers and young children in this piece of research. So it's a, the approach that we took and the methodology we took was um, participatory action research. And we've learned so much um, through this process um, and the expertise that the educators are bringing to the to the table is just phenomenal in relation to how well they know the children and what the children is telling them through their observations, through their conversations and through their learning stories and all the various um, pieces of documentation that um, that they're doing. And they're really interpreting that those kind of that hundred languages of children and um, through the collection of the data on children's experiences of Ashter. And then, you know, we're all working together then um, to analyze this data and then feed it to the NCCA in that report um, to see how it can have an impact on the review of Ashter. So it's a really 
interesting piece of research. And I suppose one of the things that I liked and what I think ASERA does quite well is that they try and match you with other um, pieces of research that's on a similar thread. So just to give people an idea, you can choose a symposium is what they're called. And then in there, there could be three research papers that's presented. So I was just one of three. Um, and as part of my research, the methodology, we did use um, and, and drew on Laura Lundy's model of participation. Um, but we also used a mosaic approach. And my co-speakers, one um, person used Laura Lundy's and the other focused on the mosaic approach. And then I came in and spoke about how we actually used both. So it was a really interesting, I suppose, symposium from that perspective, because it made my job very easy when it came. I could focus on the actual methodology and the data from my own because I didn't have to go into the detail of Laura Lundy or her model of participation or the mosaic approach because my 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 previous speakers had done that for me so it was really <laughs> well thought out um, and I think that the audience appreciated it and I had a lot of really interesting questions and um, real interest as to how to get to read it and, and I suppose it is because it's it's looking at our youngest citizens it's looking at the voice of our youngest um children and how they can influence um, and have a voice at this stage and have an influence on policy, which is what Ashtar is and what it's all about. Um, and it fitted in nicely with the theme of the conference being around participation. And I suppose that's really important when you're looking at your piece of research, that it fits in with the theme of the conference in some way, shape or form. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was delighted with it and I was delighted to have the opportunity to do it, albeit it was a little nerve wracking. but. <laughs> Got through it. <laughs> I think it's a fascinating piece of research, and I think you know it. it it's bringing that voice of the educator, um, and they they're the ones who know the children so well. I think you know sometimes researchers can go in and they observe and they interpret, but when you don't know the babies and toddlers, you know how do you know for sure that your interpretations are are accurate? Okay. And, and I, that I you that know, was when key. they yeah, when they know the babies and toddlers well, they're able to um interpret what they're yeah. really saying, what they're indicating. That was key as well. And just to kind of say that, you know, the people that the educators that we're working with on this um project is um were, were, were chosen specifically for that reason, you know, that we they know the children so well. Um, but also there was a relationship between them. They had either graduated very recently with from Maynooth. So Maynooth would have worked with them and they would have we would have known the level of expertise that they would have had to bring to the table. And um, so that relationship piece was already there as well, which, you know, was very intentional. Um, so, yeah, it was if it, it's it's great. I mean, they absolutely and they were through their observations and through the data that they were collecting, you could really see how they how well they knew those children um, in their care. And they were the, the right people to be gathering the data. And I know this wasn't really part of the research because it hasn't happened yet. But like you you mentioned, there is going to be a phase, a phase two of, of this report, of this research. Yes, there is going to be a phase two, and we are just embarking on that at the moment. And I suppose, as you, everybody knows, um, you know, the first review of Ashter has been uh, developed and there's a consultation process taking place. So like everybody had the opportunity to consult in phase one, they are now having the opportunity and been given the opportunity by NCCA to consult on to fa in phase two of the review of Ashter. And the babies, toddlers and young children are no different. So we are embarking on that. It'll be a little bit more focused because obviously we are using the data and the analysis from phase one to inform phase two um, and to see, you know, basically how what impact maybe, if any, the revised Ashter could have in areas that we felt there were gaps. So um, and that's what was in our feedback. And it's clearly in the report, um, you know, what what, cons what areas to consider, maybe more emphasis. I just always remember something that shone out, just one of them. And there was a lot. But one of the things that the babies and the toddlers and the young children were really telling us through their data was how important friendships were to them. Um, and 
you know, this was something that we highlighted in our report and you can see a huge emphasis on that relational pedagogy in the revised Ashter. So now we need to go back and see, you know, is there enough in there? Um, and, you know, it's, and, and consult babies and toddlers and young children again in, in this in this stage. So we're, we're in the we're in the planning stages and, you know, hopefully come the end of this process. You never know, we might be able to, we might be at a CIRA again sharing all of the findings out of phase two and uh, the end of the project. Yeah. So, and if anybody's interested in hearing more about the consultation and the process of updating Ashther, the episode of the podcast previous to this was with Sharon Scahill from NCCA, where she took us through the, the background and uh, the the uh, proposals that are in the updated ash there. So you can check check back on that if you missed it. So Fiona, th- there were, so we kind of mentioned a bit about us presenting the organization of the posters and so on, but there are also keynote presentations. Um, do you want to take us through some of the keynotes yeah. that, um, because they're, that's what, where the room is, you know, the big room is full with all the delegates and yeah. uh, some really interesting people present at that uh, at that part. There was the really was. Yeah. And, you know, they do it again. You know, it's all tied into the theme of the conference. And um, so they space out the keynotes. Um, so we you know, we they're over the over the few days and we opened the conference with um, Catherine Liqueur, who is a researcher in um, children's curiosity and creativity and imagination. And she's the author of um, The Wonder Approach. And I suppose she opened the conference. So a lot, like a lot of pressure <laughs> um, to a huge um, auditorium full because everybody attends the keynote and then you go out then into your chosen symposium. Um, so I suppose she really was talking about that whole concept of the wonder approach and how learning is a wondrous journey. It's guided by deep reflection um, and I suppose what the natural laws of childhood require is respect for children's innocence for their pace and rhythms their sense of mystery and their thirst for beauty and I suppose when you are listening when I was listening to Catherine I suppose maybe it's just the space that I'm in I'm constantly thinking of the Ashter and the revised Ashter and there is a huge amount in there about reflection and respecting children um just being children and being in the moment um and slowing everything down so Again, I just it just it, just, it, it it's she spoke uh, a lot to me in that in that regard. Um, there was another keynote then. Um, Johanna is from she's a a professor from uh, the University of Iceland, and I had uh, the pleasure of I I know Johanna because we worked together on a European project a couple of years ago, and I think I actually spoke myself and Melissa, my colleague, spoke on this podcast about it around uh, transitions. It was called Trap. Um, and uh, Johanna was part of that um, research and she spoke I suppose um, about children's belonging in early childhood education and again she was a really you know she's she attends a Sierra nearly quite a lot I think I've seen her there a lot but this was I think her first time being the keynote um, but um, she was her presentation really built on um, a European study on belonging and the politics of belonging and promoting children's inclusion um, in educational settings. Um, And I suppose that project was aimed to promote children's inclusion in early childhood settings and focused on children's rights and a right to a sense of belonging and being valued. And again, all of these things spoke, you know, spoke to us, uh, uh, preaching to the converted, but really interesting to hear about these um, pieces of research that's taken place. And then on the last day, um, the keynote was Ferry Lavers. Um, So I think he's no stranger to us here in early childhood Ireland and in Ireland as a whole. Um, So yeah, um, he's from the University of Leuven in Belgium. He's also a co-founder of ASERA, which is really interesting. I didn't actually know that at the time. So he's 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 been there from the start. Um, and he's a director of research. And he kind of was really focusing in on that whole concept of how involvement and well-being serves as real key indicators for quality. And he talked about curiosity and that whole deep level learning and how an experiential approach kind of helps that wondrous chain 
of events in pra- in the practice of curiosity with children and yeah just how I, he was really inspiring as well just really interesting to hear him speak it's I'm always in awe of him and he makes things very practical um and he was talking about having um learning environments built um I suppose to empower children, but also to offer rich materials and open frameworks and positive group climates. And it really was about the uh, relationships as well. He talked about the relationships between the adults and working in partnership with children. And all of that, again, is echoed through the revised Ashter, which I think was just in my head all the time. So it was just great, great to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, he's um, he's very he's so easy to listen to and so practical and, you know, I, I love the whole idea of the, the you know, just the two key things. You know, sometimes we bo- get bogged down in a multitude of things and he just distills it into that essence of yeah. two key things, the importance of well-being and the importance of involvement. And I love uh, Catherine Le- LeCure, you said. Yeah. Is that her surname? I love yeah, that I've idea. Yeah, probably not pronouncing her name correctly at all but <laughs> I, I love tried. that idea of the curiosity and creativity and you know I think we we you know in slowing down we can kind of allow for curiosity a lot more um yeah. and that's you know that it's so important yeah she she actually said something that kind of stayed with me about childhood has often become this um um race vertical race towards adulthood and you know sometimes you know it distances children more and more from that natural laws of childhood so you know just that constant loud stimuli flashy stimuli that can really just keep them away from you know the idea of being more calm giving them opportunities to quietly discover the world for themselves and relationships Again, and the importance of relationships. Yeah. But, you I, know, I think it's that, you know, again, from our own research and this research project I'm involved in, it's it's really the expertise of the educator, you mm. know, to see that. And I think that, you know, that's something that we're doing really well here in this country, being guided by the Ashton Curriculum Framework, you know, is that expertise um, and, and yeah. for them to see that because it is, as you say, the relationships, but it's um, knowing that that's, it's okay to let, yeah, you know, give yeah, them that time, yeah. you know. I, t- I took a screenshot one day last week of an ad I saw on social media um, of um, a child with a toy and the voiceover was, this toy taught my child to speak. And I, I was oh, fuming at the idea that that would be the marketing ploy because it's relationships, it's through relationships. Yeah babies learn to speak yeah not through oh handing gosh. them a toy so you know that whole thing we you know I think it's a drum we need to keep on banging is that Absolutely. it's relationships and interactions and well-being and all those things are so yeah. fundamental and we need to keep reminding ourselves it's n- not more sophisticated than that no and you know I suppose attending a conference like this and I think it's just you know I just appreciate the opportunity through early childhood Ireland um to to be there but also it's reaffirming those messages isn't it and kind of you know I suppose it it really is essential that we we're we're there to kind of be informed about those latest developments to be reaffirmed if we want to build again on those par- professional connections but also so we can contribute to the improvement of early childhood education in in Ireland and Mm. um, these conferences do play a vital role in that whole advancement of the field and as I said you know just ensuring that everything is evidence-based and Mm. making I can't talk about the making of connections because that's what you do It's, it's, Mm. it's it's where you meet the people and you hear about the research and also as well for me on a personal level it's that you know professional development piece um you know having the opportunity to present data and as I said nerve-wracking and all as it is it's it's very good for the confidence and very good to get a bit of feedback Mm. so um yeah it's in enhancing my own knowledge and skills as well in other areas yeah and making the the progress and developments that have been made here over the past years visible on visible. that broader stage 
Yeah, it's, I always say that. So important. I always say that. Sometimes, you know, as part of uh, um, European projects, you're, you know, you're working with other countries and you have to kind of say, state your state of state status in this country in a certain area. And I always kind of think, you know what, we're we're not, you know, we've got some really good practices and policies here and other countries are looking to us and kind of going, oh, wow, okay. And how did that yeah. go out and where did that come from? So really important to inspire other countries as well and show what we're doing, what we're doing well. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And there's a lot we're doing well, you know, and I think it's really recognizing that. Yeah. Yeah. So much, so much. Yeah. Fiona, thanks a million for giving us that uh, kind of potted um Fly on the wall, <laughs> oh, of um, Isira. Mara, and, you know, my pleasure. It's, it's my great pleasure. to hear about you know all, everything that 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 went on, and it's such an inspirational and um, you know um, interesting event to be part of. So I think you described it really well. So thanks so much, Fiona. No problem. And more, if it's OK, I just might end with because I think there's a lot of research going on out there. And, you know, absolutely anybody that's interested, you know, should they and if they're participating in research, they should consider it that next year's conference theme, just to let everybody know and all your listeners is around developing sustainable early childhood education systems. Um, so the strap line is comparisons, context um, uh, and the venue is in Brighton in the UK. And it's from the 4th to the 6th of September 2024. So just maybe somewhere in the back of their head, if they're involved in research or there may be maybe some of your listeners are in in doing their MA or their PhD or whatever. And they'd like an opportunity to share some of their research if, you know, the the process is well, well laid out for them. And there's a lot of supports there online to uh, submit an abstract. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Fiona. No That's problem. great. So thank you so million. much, Mara. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you for listening to this episode of Early Childhood Ireland's podcast, which is proudly supported by Aricus Insurance. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and spread the word to your friends and colleagues and stay tuned for our next episode.